This is a quick and dirty tutorial on how to use the ATEM Mini uh, in order to show three layers on screen at the same time. We're going to have a base layer, uh, which is going to be an input on input three that's called Pi. This is just a looping video playout coming from a Raspberry Pi. Um, on top of that, we're going to use the upstream key with a chroma in order to show um, me cut out from this green screen. Um, this is not a good chroma key setup. It's not a good green screen. It's not well illuminated. I'm not going to get a good key. I'm just trying to show you that it works. Um, and then on top of that, we're going to show graphics um, that I'll put on this input four, which is an external monitor on my PC using uh, John Barker's here to record graphics. So let's, um, let's start out by figuring out this, uh, this upstream key. So I'm looking right now um, at the Olympus on input one. Um, I'm going to move to the Pi input three, which is going to be my base layer. And then in the ATEM software control, I'm going to get ready to set up my chroma key by making sure that on the right-hand side under upstream key one, I've selected chroma. Um, on the fill source, I'm going to select the input that I want, which is my input one, my Olympus OMD1 camera. Um, and then I'm going to turn on the chroma key, which I can do either by hitting um, next transition uh, on air or just physically on the ATEM Mini itself by hitting um, this key on button. Um, and so because I have a, uh, a color green already picked, um, I'm not getting a great key, but you can see um, with the key on and off, it is going to pick up um, that key. If I turn the key off, that's when I can choose chroma sample um, and select a, uh, a color um, or refine that. But let's turn the chroma key on, even though it's not um, great. Um, I can adjust the, uh, the background and the edge uh, in order to get the area around my head looking not even quite as absolutely terrible as it was. Um, and of course, the problem, uh, the main problem that I'm left with is that the upper right uh, and upper left corners, um, the lower left and lower right corners are picking up what's outside of my green screen. So if I move down here, on, I can choose mask. Um, the default dimensions are um, top going from minus, top and bottom going from minus nine to plus nine, um, left going from minus 16 to plus 16. But if I click on the word left itself, uh, and then drag to the right, you should be able to see I'm cutting in that key um, from the left-hand side. I can also just type a number in there. So let me try, um, say, minus 14. Um, and that's going to get rid of that um, left side of the crop. If I choose um, plus 14 on the right, I should be able to, uh, to crop in the right-hand side. So um, that is giving me uh, the chroma key that puts me on top of the background layer. Um, let's move now to the PC. Um, which is on input four. I'm going to turn the key off and I'm going to open up um, the here to record graphics software. So um, I'm running V2, which is in beta um, of the here to record graphics software. Things would, of course, look um, slightly different in version one. Um, I'm going to open an output window um, and then I'm going to move that output window onto um, the external monitor and I'm going to maximize it. Um, so let's make that full screen um, on that external monitor. And you can see that that's what we're now seeing um, on input four. Um, I do have uh, on screen, that's a clock right now. Um, I'm going to go to settings in h graphics. I currently have the background color set to transparent, but because I'm going to need to use a Luma key, um, I'm going to set this to, to black spelled correctly, I hope. Um, and the reason is that the A10 mini only has um, one uh, key that can handle chroma, that's the upstream key. And since I'm already using that for my camera, I'm going to have to use Luma or Luminescence on the downstream key, um, which means that I want to use black for the background. So I'm done with settings. I've got a black background now. Um, I can open up the control window here, um, and that control window is going to let me turn stuff on and off. So for example, right now, um, I can put the time of day um, on and off. Let's get that one on. Um, let's see, I think I've got a, uh, I think I've got a Babson logo that maybe I can bring on screen in the lower left-hand corner, um, and I've got a, uh, a lower thirds that I can set up there. So those are all ready to control. I'm going to move back over to the A10 mini window, um, and here under downstream key, I'm going to make sure that the fill source is set to PC display, which is that fourth input. The key source is set to PC display. The mask is off. I want pre-multiplied key um, off, I believe, although I can check that later. And so now what I'm going to move to is I'm going to put um, my preferred input in program, uh, which in this case is input three. Um, I'm going to bring on the downstream key, which I can do here in the ATEM software control. 
um, by hitting on air, or I could bring that on with a transition by tying it, um, or by uh, hitting the auto button to bring it on with a transition. And then I'm also going to bring um, the key on with my next transition, and um, and there we are. So now we're getting a uh, uh, three layers on screen, the H2R graphics controlled layer, which is coming in um, on top using the downstream keyer. Um, and so those should animate in and off as desired um, when I run the programs using the H2R graphics control. Um, behind that, we've got the poorly chroma keyed in um, and cropped layer coming from input one. And then in the background, um, the, uh, the input on three. And as long as I have my um, transitions set correctly, um, I should be able, for example, to put another input, um, like let's say media player one um, in preview. And if, uh, if I then run the transition on auto, um, that of course did not work as I hoped. Um, I can bring myself um, in front of a different input. 